This entitled parent thinks her child is a genius, but when the IQ test results come in, she's in for the shock of her life. Just wait until you see her ludicrous response. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. This story is, as the title says, how my sister-in-law nearly killed me during Christmas dinner. No, before you ask, the woman isn't a horrible cook, quite the opposite in fact. But the problem is, I have a serious allergy to liver. Two minutes to be stabbed in the thigh with an EpiPen before I pass out from not being able to breathe. We found out after I was forced to eat liver at my grandfather's when I was seven and had to be rushed to the hospital. Now, my family was well aware of this allergy and it was something my brother told his wife. Now don't get me wrong, I do love my sister-in-law, but she does crap that irritates me and seldom thinks things through before she does something. Now the cast. Me, bro, an idiot sister-in-law. Anyways, the first Christmas I went to their place for dinner, my brother mentioned to me that his wife had put liverwurst in the stuffing, but had cooked it in a pot separate from everything else. So when we sat down to dinner, idiot sister keeps watching me. Aren't you having the stuffing? No, sorry, I'm allergic to liver. That's not a real allergy. You just don't like the taste. Eat some or the kids won't touch it. No, it's true. She nearly died once when we were kids after being forced to eat it. IS didn't argue further and the night went well. Basically the same thing happened at Thanksgiving. She put the liverwurst in the stuffing and I didn't eat it. That Christmas she told me that she couldn't find liverwurst and wasn't able to add it to the stuffing. So, a few bites into dinner, I feel it. My throat starting to close. I don't really remember what happened next. I I panicked big time. I barely felt it when my EpiPen was being stabbed into my thigh and my youngest nephew bawling his eyes out. My brother had gotten my EpiPen from my purse and used it while one of our mutual friends was calling 911. I was lying on the floor and my head was killing me. My brother ran into the kitchen and started digging through the trash and yep, you guessed it, she had put the liverwurst in the freaking stuffing. He was ticked. The ambulance arrived and took me to the ER. I had hit my head on the windowsill when I fell and needed stitches, and ended up staying overnight for observation. Merry Christmas, am I right? Few days later, my idiot sister-in-law drops by my apartment, unannounced, wanting to speak with me. I had just finished cleaning and was running the dishwasher. She didn't come to apologize, really. She just said she thought I was fibbing about my allergy and wanted to prove it. I was still ticked with her, and doubly so because the stitches in the scalp made washing my hair insanely difficult. She also wanted me to talk to my brother, who was still furious that she sent his big sister to the hospital over something childish. What kind of person lies about being allergic to something? Also, I'm in my freaking 30s. If I chose not to eat something, that's my choice to make. She didn't have anything to say on that, but notices my dishwasher running. Why is your dishwasher running? I'm baking a freaking cake in there. What do you think I'm doing? You're a single person. How do you use enough dishes to warrant using a dishwasher? Me with zero fricks given at this point. You're a stay-at-home mum. Why is your house always a freaking pig? pen. I know, a little mean, but I wanted her to leave. She left at that and didn't speak to me for two or three months after that. Oh, and you just know she's gonna play the victim. Can you believe what she said to me? Doesn't really equate to you basically almost killing her. I mean, how is it different from poisoning someone? If somebody has an allergy, which means it could kill them if they don't get treatment, and you put that in their food, especially if you deceive them and like, nah, none of that in there, it just feels like there's no justice in this story. I'm a psychology student currently trying to get my master's degree, and in my country, in order to validate your degree, you have to do a six month long internship in a practice, where you get to treat your first patients under supervision. This means after each session, you do a briefing with your supervisor, where you discuss the case and how to proceed next. I'm doing my internship in a children's clinic, as my specialization is in children's and teenagers psychology. It's also important to know that in my country, a lot of children are diagnosed with ADHD or high potential potential, basically a really high IQ, and this represents a fair share of the children we see at my clinic. And therefore, since a few years, it has become a vicious circle. Every time a kid acts out a little bit in class, the parents immediately think they must be diagnosed either with ADHD or high potential. Although, in my opinion, most of the time they're just children being children. You can't expect to be calm and quiet all the time. Sometimes all they need is a bit of discipline when they really do something wrong. I don't know if it's much of a problem in other countries 
case, so I thought it was better to make that clear. So it was just a regular day at the clinic. I already had two or three appointments, and they were all pretty great, at least according to the great supervisor. My next patient was EK, and they were the last one I was going to see before my lunch break. They were scheduled for 11am, and from what I could gather by what they told the receptionist on the phone, EM wanted EK to take an IQ test because they've been acting out in school, apparently because they're too smart and get bored because it's too easy for them. The school wants me to prove it to them so that EK can go directly to the next grade. She was not the first parent to ask for that and I always try and keep an open, non-judgmental state of mind so I was like yeah maybe that's exactly what's happening. Maybe EK really is bored in class because they're too smart. It happens you know. Boy was I wrong. First of all the whisk V, at least that's what I'm going to call it, which is the test we use to test the IQ with children, takes quite a long time to run through entirely and it is really not recommended to stop at the middle of the test to do the rest later because you will not be in the same state the first time and the next and that can really affect your results in the end. So when a parent wants us to test their child's IQ, we warn them to be on time and that the process can take quite the time too. So they should be prepared for that. Since I'm still supervised, we also have to film the room where the test happens just to see if I do it right as some of the test items must be put in a certain way and not another and I have to say some instructions in some exact words so it's just to check that how the test was done was not unbiased. This will be important later. We also warn the parents about that on the phone and ask them to come a bit earlier than the time scheduled so that they can sign the consent form for the film. So as you can understand being on time or early is something that we really put a focus on the first time we speak with the parents. Entitled parent and entitled kid show up 30 minutes late. My opened non-judgmental state of mind kind of started to be tested. EP went through the consent forms with the receptionist and after that she'd just wait for the receptionist until EK's done with their IQ test. I told her that she might want to wait at the cafe right next to our clinic that she will be way more comfortable waiting there as it will take some time for EK to take the whole test. She responded something like what are you sponsored by this cafe? I don't want to pay anything I just want to wait. The IQ test cost a lot already. I looked at her and just shrug and took EK to the testing room. I tried really hard to forget about this interaction with EM. She was the one that annoyed me, not EK. So let's not redirect my anger for her towards them, I thought. But they quickly proved that the apple had not fallen far from the tree. Before we arrived in the room, while we were walking in the hallways, they kept telling how they were going to ace this test, how they're so intelligent, and how they can't wait to skip a grade. Sure, bud. Whatever. During the test, they start all the answers by, well, obviously the right answer is, or some kind of similar phrases. They really wanted to show that they were smart. Once the test is done, I walk them back to their mum, who was shouting at the receptionist, asking what took so long. She saw us and said, Finally! I've been waiting for like an hour! To which I responded, Well, I did tell you it would take some time. She stared at me for a few seconds, sighed and rolled her eyes, like I just said the most annoying thing in the world, and and asked me when they could get the results. I told her I had to get them checked by my supervisor before telling her anything. She then said, Oh, so we then have to wait again? I said yes. I told her that we would call them in the afternoon for the results. She raised her arms, grabbed EK, and left. During lunch, I go through the results with my supervisor, and we discover that EK has an IQ of 104, which is clearly average, and far from the IQ you need to be diagnosed as high potential. My supervisor watches the video of the testing and says I've done everything right and that I can call EM to tell her. This is exactly what I do and she is furious. She says she doesn't believe me and just hangs up. 20 minutes later or so, she barges in the clinic and demands to see me. I was just finished with another patient, so I tell the receptionist to tell her to come to my office, which she does. She yells at me for about 10 minutes. How dare you say my child is not smart? This is not what I said. Then how do you explain how they get bored in school? Well, maybe it's because you're just a student. You're not an actual psychologist. I want a real psychologist to test my child. Actually, my child is the smartest in the world. How dare 
dare you. At this point, everyone in the clinic can hear her rant, even my supervisor. So a great supervisor comes into my office and asks if everything is okay. No, not everything is okay. This dumb student here says my child isn't smart. You need to test him again. GS looks at me and tells me to leave and that he'll handle it. From what I've heard, GS stayed very calm while explaining to EM that no, 104 IQ is not high potential and maybe she should see the problem from another angle. That he watched the videos of the testing and that I didn't do anything wrong. He stayed so calm during his explanations, I was really impressed. I don't think I could have kept my cool like that. You know, they warn you about entitled parents in psychology classes, but geez, I did not expect that. Every parent wants to believe that their child's the most smartest child in the world. And of course, if they're causing trouble at school, it's not because that they have behavioral issues, no, it's because they're a genius. That's the obvious explanation. They're just too bored because they're too smart. You know what? Let's bump him up a grade. That'll solve everything. You know, at 104, I believe he's technically just above average because uh, isn't the average 100? So she'll probably be telling people that he's super smart anyway. One of my aunts had kids about the same time I did. We lived near her for a while, but stopped getting our kids together because her oldest kid was extremely entitled. Her daughter could be a reasonable human being, but my aunt did her best to make her son the most entitled child on the planet. I swear she thought she was competing for the most entitled mom and who can make the most entitled child awards. As a result of her actions, her kids were horribly behaved in public. One day we were over for some relative's birthday. My aunt starts talking about about how horrible the church is being about her kids. In about 10 seconds, the entire backyard full of adults is dead silent. My aunt was furious because the priest asked her to come to the church office earlier in the week. Aunt was taking her oldest child to mass with her because at four, he was old enough. Their particular parish had a cry room where children who are too small to sit still and be quiet during mass are able to sit with their parents. Of course, her child had no need of the cry room, so she insisted they sit in the second pew so he can have a good view. I honestly could not figure out what he needed a view of, but I only spent six years in Catholic school, so what did I know? It seems her son would not sit in the pew. He stood in it. He yelled things at the priest at various times. He got out into the aisle and laid down with a race car making loud vroom vroom noises. He wandered away and got up to the altar and tried to grab the entire plate of communion wafers. When people were lined up for communion, he stood next to the line with the wine and tried to jostle people's arms so the wine would spill. Overall, he behaved exactly the way you do not behave during mass. When my aunt was called in to talk to the priest, she was sure he was going to praise her for raising such a wonderful, perfect child. I saw the look between the two of the great aunts when she told us this during the party. It was sheer disbelief that she could ever think this. The nerve of the priest to criticize her son or her parenting. My aunt told us that the priest clearly needed to not be at the church. He needed to retire to a quieter parish because he cannot tell the good children from the bad ones. The priest was 35 at the time. She was incredibly insulted that he thought she could teach her child to not behave like a hooligan in church. Her son was perfect. Then she said the line that made me not have my kids around hers any longer. If God wanted my kids to behave a certain way in church, he would make them. He clearly wanted my perfect son to talk to everyone and to answer the questions the priest asked. God is all powerful and he will make Entitled Son sit still if that's what he wants. Of course we didn't sit in the cry room. Entitled Son adds so much to the service and everyone should have the privilege of spending mass with Entitled Son. Even her mostly oblivious husband was stunned at that statement. The party ended shortly after that. Those of us who had kids didn't really want them to pick up bad habits from Entitled Son. The older relatives all left with excuses of early mornings the next day. Then Entitled Aunt and Entitled Son son wondered why no one showed up for Entitled Son's birthday. It seems we all sent gifts with our regrets because we all had some crisis or another that kept us from being there. The next son her child was at mass was during his first year at Catholic school. One of the teachers had to sit right next to him so that he would behave with some semblance of appropriate behavior. Imagine having so much arrogance thinking your son is perfect that you say that oh God will make him sit still if he wanted him to be. Yeah, it's not like God gives us personal responsibility for ourselves, for how we raise our kids, nothing like that. 
I host a weekly D&D game at a game store near my hometown. I'm friends with the owner and employees at the store and have been doing this for several months now. I run a fairly beginner friendly game and we advertise it on the website and on signs around the store to get people interested. This has all gone pretty well so far and I've made some good friends of regular players while having a large rotating cast of newbies that drop in and out of the game. Well I am setting up for a game last week and in comes EM and her three children, all aged between 4 and 8, if I had to guess. Well, EM has a quick chat with the owner as he points in my direction and she comes over to me. She asks if I'm in charge of the game night and I say yes I am. She then tells me, doesn't ask, that her kids will be participating. I explain that I'm at table capacity for my game that night so I wouldn't be able to accommodate three more players. She says that's okay, they'll just watch then. I say that is fine. I explain the rough start and end times of the session and she nods absentmindedly while she scrolls away on her phone before sitting down at the table next to me with her kids. Well, about 20 minutes later, my players are all here and taking their places at the table. I'm not even halfway through my typical greeting and explanation of the game for that night before EM has gotten halfway to the door of the game store. This is the exchange once I notice this. Um, ma'am, aren't you forgetting something? Cue me pointing to her three kids just sitting at the table, half asleep at this point. I'll be back at 10 to pick them up. Just make sure they behave, alright? She's not even looking up from her phone, still walking away. I'm not a babysitter. You need to take your children with you if you're leaving. I have things to do, just don't let them get into any trouble and they'll be fine. The owner, noticing what is happening now. No ma'am, we are not going to be responsible for watching your children for you. Please take them with you when you leave. Fine. I guess I'll just have to tell their father that date night is ruined because a bunch of freaking nerds couldn't keep an eye on three kids for a few hours. Pathetic. Ma'am, there are children in the store, pointing to some of the younger players. And I'd appreciate you not using that language in here. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave now. EM turning bright red and grabbing her children rushing out. Oh, get lost, you jerk. EM then leaves and I spend the next few minutes talking with my players about the whole situation before we get back into the game. How did she even think of this as an idea? Her husband's just like, honey, you want to go on a date night? That would be so nice, but what do we do about the kids? Well, we could ask friends or family or we could pay a babysitter like a normal person would. Uh, no, I think I got a better idea. There's this D&D &D meetup, like, just down the road. Yeah, they could, they could just watch them for a while. I'm sure it'll be fine. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.